yeah. Olympic trials was a very tough time. You've got some new jewelry on your hand. Oh my God. Ah, we have to talk about it. <laughs> okay, what was the setting? I'm officially engaged. Let's go. <laughs> and, but I like just got on my knees and prayed and I basically surrendered to God. I was just like, mm. I, I can't do this. Like I literally cannot do this on my own. It's just not enjoyable. Like literally nothing feels right. I didn't understand what it was at the time, but I knew it could only be, you know, Christ. I mean, you're watching your first Olympic Games and four years later, you'd be winning gold. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. What's going on, guys? Ginger and Jeremy here, and we're very excited about this episode because we have, for the first time ever, a guest on the show. We're very excited. A thing Mo is with us, and... You guys are going to be blown away at her story. I just could not believe how much success she's had um, in such a short amount of time. Like she started running so young and God has just blessed her and you're going to hear her spiritual journey and as well as her professional journey. Yeah, we're going to get into all of it. So a thing is the youngest track and field athlete to ever win an Olympic gold and a world's championship. She holds the record for the 800 meter. She's the fastest track and field women's athlete to ever do that event. She's one of the fastest women in the world, but she's also a Christian. She loves Jesus. She just got engaged. So we're going to get into the heights of glory, the depths of the trials that life throws at us. A thing Mo is hanging out with us today. So you'll want to stick around for this one. You're going to love this. What's up guys, Ginger and Jeremy here. And we're excited because we have an exciting guest with us. A thing, Mo. Welcome to the Ginger and Jeremy podcast. Yay. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. You are our very first guest to have on the podcast, and so we are very excited. This um, is big. This is a breakthrough. For, I know. I know. Um, I'm a little intimidated over here because, oh, no. like, you're such a star girl. So, no, <laughs> I'm kidding. We're actually just very excited to sit down with you and to chat. So. I'm super honored to be the first guest. I kind of thought about it. I'm not going to lie. After I've been seeing y'all's podcast on my Instagram a little bit, I was like, hmm, I wonder if they're ever going to have guests or if this will always just be intimate. So I'm so thankful that you guys allowed me to be on the podcast. Oh, well, we're stoked. Um, we've gotten to know a thing because you've been going to church, our church, for a while and just join in. Well, yes, I've been going to church with you guys for almost two, going on to three years now. It's been a super great experience, only now becoming an official member, but um, just for the past couple of years years that I've been there, it's just been such a uh, a great spiritual growth for me. Um, I've learned so much. I've um, had a lot of firsts um, mm -hmm. going into, you know, just being at church also. And so it's just been a really mm -hmm. great experience. And I feel like it's just exactly where I need to be, especially at this point of my faithful journey. Love it. That's awesome. So I want to start our conversation at a moment when you were 18 years old, standing on an Olympic podium receiving a gold medal. Talk about that experience. What was that like? I mean, there's 18 year old, a thing. Take us into that moment. Yeah. I was 19, just turned 19 a couple months before, but, um, it was pretty insane. I mean, I think, I feel like personally I have not actually accepted the fact, I guess in the moment. And I think it's just because, um, I mean, I, I was so young and it was a first experience mm -hmm. for me. I had no other knowledge or background about what the actual what the olympics actually meant and what it actually was and so going into it i was kind of just i don't know i guess naive is the best word to use it was just a random experience that i got to um that i've been blessed to be able to do but standing on the podium i don't know i i think the one thing that i always say is that beyond just myself just being on the podium we had another american girl that finished third also and mm -hmm. i think i was just so happy about the fact that it wasn't just me that it was also um raven is her name who finished third and so i don't know it just felt pretty special um being able to share that moment with someone else but um i don't know it's, it was a crazy experience and i kind of still think back to that day and just it's kind of it's almost mind blowing to just think about the fact that I was able to do that. And I mean, even the story beforehand of just what led up to it is really insane. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was a crazy moment for me. Yeah, we do want to get into that. We want to get into like taking you back as far back as you'd like to go. Um, if you want to go back to your childhood, just to hear like where you grew up um, and like where you – like interested in running at that point when you were a child or when did that start? So I have a really big family. 
Four brothers and two sisters. Um, I'm the six out of the seven child. So you're number six. I'm I, number six too. Oh my god! I like that. You. Let's go. <laughs> but I'm like the baby girl, so I'm a pretty. I'm a little spoiled. I'm a, I'm a little bit of a. <laughs> I like you know. it. Um, but so right. <laughs> all my siblings before me have run track, whether it was just um, I don't know club team or just in high school. Okay. They've all run. Only a few has go- have gone to college, but since I was like kind of the youngest one, I was the last one to follow through. Mm. Most of the time, I would just go to the track just so I can be babysat by my siblings because my mom was just working. Yeah. Um, but it was all just fun and games. I was not going to practice to run. Mm. It was more so, oh, okay, we're just going just to hang out and play with my friends yeah. or whatever. Um, and so that's when I think eventually a couple years in, maybe like two or three years in, the coaches there kind of saw me running and they're just like, uh, yeah, I think she should join the team. And so that was the first moment of me actually running. I probably was maybe eight or nine at the time. Okay officially running on the track team. Wow. Um, when I was nine, I ran at my first national championships. It was club wow. nationals. Um, yeah, so that's like maybe three or four four years into just just doing this random act. But from the years of maybe like nine up until 14, 15, I literally just did it just as a, ha- a habit. It wasn't like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, this is, you know, I'm really good at this sport, so I'm doing it. It was more so just, okay, I knew just from experience that, mm-hmm. okay, I go to school, after school I have practice, and then after practice, you know, homework, go to sleep, and then start the day over again. Um, so I didn't really understand what was happening, but, you know, just doing it, it was eventually after I kept on kind of just getting better and better at it and my coach is acknowledging it also along with my family I realized okay I guess maybe this is something you know this is a sport for me and not just like a um, an extracurricular activity so I think it was maybe 14 to 15 years old when I was running at my state meet for like just in Jersey Um, I think it was regionals and I was running four events um, just Actually, it was three events. I ran the 800, the 1500, and the 400. Oh, wow. And I think I broke this. And it was also my birthday. Oh, that's I, crazy. I think I broke the state record in like the age group state record in like all three of them. And so I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> what a great birthday gift. And I, I, everyone else was like pretty impressed about it. But yeah. I mean, that might have been my first moment of actually recognizing the fact mm. that, okay, I might be, at, you know, just a little bit better than I thought at this sport. Yeah. Um, then comes, what is it? 2016, I believe is when I watched my first ever Olympic games. It was Rio. I remember it just coming on the TV. My family was gathered in the living room. Um, I remember watching, um, Clayton Murphy. He won the men's 800 Mm -hmm. and that was an event that was practically, I guess, maybe my main event at the time. I still was kind of going back and forth between 400 and 1500 at that time, but I knew about the 800, and so I was pretty impressed when he got bronze. And then moving forward, I watched the women's 4x4 relay, and I believe they won gold. So that was like my first experience. And I think from that moment, that's when I kind of thought to myself like, oh, I want to be a professional athlete, and I want to win an Olympic gold medal. Wow. Yeah. That's, That's crazy. Incredible. So you saw yourself. I mean, you're watching your first Olympic Games and four years later, you'd be winning gold. It's, it's crazy. It's, yeah. And did you envision that or were you, was it like a pipe dream or were you really like, oh no, no, I could do this? No, I mean, I think it was more so just me just dreaming of it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I feel like when I was in school, I knew the, I didn't grow up in the best environment. And so I knew that regardless of what I do, I just knew that I wanted to get out of the environment that I was in. And so because I ran track and because I knew I was getting better at it, I kind of thought that was my escape way out. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I kind of put that vision in my head where it was just like, okay, I am going to go to the Olympics and I'm going to win an Olympic gold medal or I'm going to be a professional athlete. But I didn't really think, I absolutely did not think like, not even the slightest chance that four year it was going to come that soon. Like I knew in the future, mm-hmm. but I did not expect it to come four or five years later as it did. It was really crazy. Did that you, is incredible. As you're winning gold, did you think back to those, to sitting on your couch at home watching? <laughs> I mean, do things like what flashes through your mind? As like, a- I don't know. I feel like, again, because I was like, I was, you know, I was so young at the time. And so, because again, it's a first experience for me. I don't think anything really kind of snapped in my mind of like just recognizing how it all fell into place. I think it was just me just going through the motions and just like Mm -hmm. being in the moment. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, oh, okay, well, I won an Olympic gold medal. Cool. (laughs) Still didn't know the significance of it. It was just just a known fact. And um, I mean, I feel like even still to this day, it's um, I don't know when I 
every time I look back at that, you know, that that was such a pivotal year leading up to it for me, especially, I just literally think about how gracious God has been to me in that time. And just mm -hmm. knowing like, I could have never imagined that happening in such a short amount of time, but he still allowed it to happen. And I was just able to, you know, trust him and walk as his vessel and just, I don't know, allow his story or the, his story that he has for me to just be unveiled. Mm -hmm. And I still think, you know, that's also like part of my, the first, that's basically the first major part of my faithful journey as well, because just a year before I ended up going to the Olympics, that's when I uh, gave my life to Christ. And so it was just, I don't know, it's pretty incredible. It's just, uh, mm -hmm. it's almost still crazy to think about just because, I don't know, I could never imagine anyone doing such a, just giving me such a kind gesture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. So talk about that. When when did Christ center the picture in your life? Uh, my family and I have, well, I talked to my parents actually, and apparently we were Catholics first. And then when they, when they came to the U.S. Um, from leaving South Sudan a couple years and they met, I guess, family friends now who brought them into a Christian church and that's when they converted. And so it was in my super young days. I mean, I don't remember this at all. Sure. I don't even know if I was born yet, but mm -hmm. that's when we just became Christians and um, I was baptized really young, but throughout this time we were going to church every Sunday. Um, I mean, it was kind of a still a going through the motions type of relationship, but I know my mom and dad were pretty committed to just making sure that we were still engraved with knowing who Christ was and just like having the word in front of us, even though we didn't really know how to navigate through it too much. We still just had it as um, just something that was like our foundation mm -hmm. into what we wanted to believe. Um, and then that's when I took, or my family and I took a long couple of years away from the church. I think maybe, maybe like six or eight years, I think between six and eight years where, um, I don't know, we we're kind of just living life. We weren't really going to church as much. I mean, maybe for Christmas or the holidays is just as I guess some people do. But that's when I think senior year of high school for me, I was COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And so wow. um, it was 2020. Um, yeah, it was 2020 or it was 2019 going into the 2020 year. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the happiest. I didn't really enjoy school just because I know I didn't really have many friends. School work was super hard. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I was also going through the process of um, recruiting, like school recruiting. And so I was going to visit some colleges, deciding where I wanted to take the next steps for my career. Um, I also had the opportunity to like go pro when I was super young too. So there was just kind of a lot of things that were going on, but I knew I wanted to go to college and just choosing the school was the kind of hardest part for me. I remember Oregon was my dream school, but when I took the visit there, it wasn't a homey feeling at all. It kind of just felt like it would be more so work mm -hmm. and not so enjoyable. So that was kind of the red flag for me when it came to that school. But then when I went to go visit a and I was like, oh my God. I really, this was not my dream school, but I love it so much. And I don't know, I feel like I kind of came into a clock conflict point where I was like, okay, I love Oregon. That's my dream school. I have the opportunity to go there, full scholarship for both, for both. But I think I was more so thinking, you know, I guess I was thinking a little bit pridefully because I was like, Oregon has like so much history. Like they're just like the pivotal point of of athletics, like they're just so great. And so I wanted to go to that school for that reason. Right. But then, um, you know, I knew A&M just felt so right. And so I kind of, I don't know, I had a hard time kind of deciding where I wanted to go. And I don't know, I remember on Instagram somewhere, I saw a post and it was like, yeah, God wouldn't have allowed you, you know, wouldn't have given you that experience if it wasn't for you, or he wouldn't allow you to make that decision if, it wasn't for you. And so I think after seeing that, I was like, all right, you know what? I'm just going to commit to A&M because it just feels right. This is where I feel like I want to be. And um, that's where I committed to. A couple months later, I still was kind of struggling with just, I don't know, I think it was, I think I was borderline depressed, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Not, I had a lot of my siblings outside of the house. And so it wasn't that enjoyable for me. Um, but at one point, I think it was like May, I just, it was like a super hard day for me. I was like, all right, you know what? Something in my mind or just, you know, something, yeah, in my head, I'm pretty sure, I'm sure it was the Holy Spirit was just like, just get on your knees and pray. 
And wow. so that's exactly what I did. I literally just like straight up was already crying beforehand, but I like just got on my knees and prayed and I basically surrendered to God. I was just like, mm. I, I can't do this. Like I literally cannot do this on my own. It's just not enjoyable. Like literally nothing feels right. And I don't know, in the moment, I vividly remember just feeling so much weight just absolutely come off my shoulders. Like it was such a surreal moment. I didn't understand what it was at the time, but I knew it could only be, you know, Christ. And so from that moment on, this was now going into the summer leading up to my freshman year of college. I was just committed to you. Uh, committed to the Lord. I was just like, mm -hmm. hey, let me just do my devotionals. I'm going to wake up early, get my devotionals done. And I was taking summer classes. So I was just like, I think it started at eight o'clock with my like yeah. tutor. I was like, okay, let me get up, do my devotional mm -hmm. and then get with my tutor. And let me just keep this kind of habit until we get to school. And that's how it went leading up to my freshman year. And I knew that one of the things, especially that I told myself, I was just like, all right, I don't know what's going to happen this freshman year of college. It's not the school I thought I was going to go to, but mm -hmm. I don't care if it takes me one year to leave the school. I don't care if it takes me four years. I just want to just enjoy what's happening and just let God take control. And that's what happened the whole year. And it was an incredible year for me. Wow. That is awesome. I think just hearing how you sought the Lord in all of that, like in, in just really like even that moment of prayer that you realize like you're so weak, you're so helpless, even though like you have – like in the world's eyes, you have so much strength inside of you because of your, you know, physical work that you put in, but the spiritual side, like coming together as I think recently they've been talking a lot about a complete athlete, like, and how that's a thing, like you have this side over here of, um, where spiritually you're relying on the Lord and then physically you're training, right? Like it's such a beautiful combo to hear how God really like directed your step, led you to A&M. And I'm actually curious, how was the transition from Jersey to A&M? The weather, the the accents, the culture, all the, the things, cowboy the culture, boots. Like, yeah. Do you say y'all? I do, do say y'all. <laughs> <say that? laughs> we have to know because like we I live in say Texas. I love saying y'all. Do you like, have cowboy so boots? I have a pair of cowboy boots. What? You do? Yeah. You okay, went what full color are they? Texas. What color do you? They're brown. Wear? They're okay, just simple. Just They're classic. just like classic. Yeah. That's what you classic. need if you were if you were in Texas. Is that your horse? That's the way that, to go. Was that, that you parked outside? <laughs> yeah, I just have two down there. I just uh, yeah. I was wondering whose horse, horse was that. Yeah. yeah, that's so great. <laughs> um, I love it. It was easy. I I honestly was super shocked about how easy it was and. Honestly, I feel like it literally was just the Lord just like looking yeah. out for me and being like, hey, like, I'm not going to just break, like, I'm not going to give you this opportunity to be here and like mm. lead you into this place and then not help you get through it. Right. And so I thought that one of the main things I was thinking about, like going, leading into going to Texas, I was like, there's no way I'm going to survive this heat. I remember running yeah. at a club national championship in, in Houston, Texas. Oh, They my. had a black warm up track. It That's was the crazy. worst experience. I literally felt like I was going to pass out every day. Yeah. And so I did not know how I was going to survive, but the people were great. Like, mm. I'm, you know, Jersey culture is very, it's we're different. just like straight to the point. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not much sweet talking, right? Yeah. You know, and it's, it's like, the yeah. mindset of like, if you start talking to someone, they're like, what do you want? Exactly. Like, what, why are you talking to me? Exactly. But in Texas, it's so different. Everyone's just so sincere and just like welcoming. I'm like, oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. how have I missed this all my life? For sure. So it was just really, really easy. I even trained through the summer and wow. don't know how I survived that That's either. That's crazy because the heat there is next level. So for, for, you know, just students going, yeah. they're going to be sitting in classes all day. They're not on the sports arena. Like, yeah making that decision to go to Texas in the heat. Like mm -hmm. that's wild girl. That's crazy. Next level. Um, so I'm actually curious since I did not do any sports, organized sports growing up. My family just, we didn't do that. Yeah. We played like broom ball with our community, okay. did a couple little things, right. That are fun. But I am curious, how was this training process? You said, I mean, you really did get started young and you were thrown into this, um, arena of like pro and what was what was that um progression for you like how did you get connected with the right people who were you training with at that time when you decided that you wanted to work towards that goal yeah um i think it took a it took me a long time to actually decide that i to truly know what it means to be professional and mm -hmm. like be like okay i do want to take this journey I think my coaches did a really great job from me being a youth athlete up until then just, I guess, a junior athlete is what we call under 20. And so I think they did a really good job with just transitioning me through every period mm -hmm. because 
you know, as a youth, we kind of were just running for fun. Like it, there was no pressure. It's just like, okay, you're really good. Let's go here. Like, you know, enjoy the time, just Mm -hmm. like run. We'll see what you're really good at. And then we'll, you know, we'll move you to wherever you need to be. And then I think when I got to high school, maybe going into junior year, that's when I started running with professional athletes. Again, it still was a little fun, but of course I'm kind of like, um, I don't know. I had a point in my, you know, while I was still training, while I was still running with the professional athletes, like, I was like, mm, it's fine. You know, it's fine if they beat me because I'm still so young. I have so many years to, you know, grow into being a better mm. athlete. And then at some point I kind of realized that that's not the best way to think if I do mm. want to get to this next level. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to just use this time as my time because I don't know when this career is going to end. But like if I'm running with professional athletes, let me just try my best. Let me be the best. I'm obviously mm-hmm. here for a reason. And so that's when I actually started putting the effort forward. Um, when I was 16, I uh, won a, like a, a, I think it was USA's indoors. It was like a 600. They were doing off events that year. Wow. I think I ran like the second, um, second, like world's second best time ever or something like that. But That's I was like crazy. super young. That I only so wanted crazy. to win a high school, like was that the, the high school record. No, it was a 600. Oh, the 600. Because wow. so you are the fastest under 20 for the 800. Yeah. Right? Uh, um, I don't know if it's indoors or outdoors. It might be outdoors. I love how you, I love how you hold world records and stuff, and you're like, yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't really. Uh, it was don't really we'll look at that stuff. <laughs> we'll we'll have that like graphic pop up here, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was uh, it was pretty good. I think we just you know slowly progressed, and um, I think it was a really big and like great decision for me to mm. actually decide that I wanted to go to college because mm. I got to experience teammates for one because I trained basically all of my years without like on my own and so oh, it was wow. super lonely That's um crazy. and so just having teammates was like mm. such a different experience it was so incredible to just have people around me doing the same exact thing being student mm. athletes and just training together and yeah I think it just prepared me I guess having one more year of just enjoyment in the sport before I decided to go professional. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, I think we just made slow progressions. And I think when I knew it was time and it was a really good opportunity for me, I just decided, okay, we may as well just take this route because, hey, it's a good opportunity. Did the pressure change? Like, did it change the sport for you at all? I mean, I know you've been a pro now for some years and you've accomplished a lot. You've been through a lot, but was there a pretty quick change in your experience of how you enjoyed the sport? Absolutely. I've had so many, so many moments during these just couple of years where I'm like, this is not enjoyable. Um, mm-hmm. Even during that 2020 period before, um, just like right before I gave my life to Christ, I was like, I don't want to run track. I'm like, mm-hmm. I will happily go work at McDonald's until I can get money to do this next thing that I want to do. Like I was like ready to give up track um as a whole and then over I think even the past two years for me have been like really just it's been really tough just because it's been a whole different um different I've had to grow a lot in the past two years and so just on the professional side but also for me as an athlete myself as well um and coming from such a high of you know winning Olympic gold medals and then winning a world title it was just people have so many expectations for you Mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, well, I still want to enjoy the sport. You know, like I don't, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to say too much of like, I don't really care if I win or lose. I just want to enjoy what I'm doing. Um, because you get to a point in your career where you have to also understand that you do have to, you know, this is your job. And so Mm -hmm. it's still important not to, you know, not to put all of your effort and time and just like mind on solely winning, but to just know that this is just what you do. And so Mm -hmm. in order for you to continue to just have this opportunity that you have before you, you need to put the effort into trying at least (laughs) to be your Mm -hmm. best and not kind of just, you know, doing it halfway because Mm -hmm. that's not going to get you anywhere. And Mm -hmm. that's not why the Lord has put me in this position either. Mm -hmm. You talk about the Lord putting you in that position. It's one of the lessons I learned going pro in soccer was there's a beautiful freedom when you're playing just for Christ and his approval where you're looking around because you do, you enter the pro game and it's not the game you fell in love with at eight years old where you're just out there having fun. It's now like contracts on the line when you, you know, I, I wasn't married when I played pro, but guys have families. And so every off season they're like, 
Do I have to move my family across the country? Mm -hmm. Are we going to have food on the table? Mm -hmm. Um, And then you've got coaches. One day you're a hero. The next day it's like everybody hates you. And all, all of these pressures. And knowing, I mean, it's a, a lesson that took me a while to learn, but stepping on the field going, I'm not playing for everyone's approval. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play to glorify God. Um, it frees you, but it also, it doesn't make, give you or make you lazy because then you recognize the stewardship of the gift. Like God's the one who's giving me this opportunity. What a cool opportunity to play a sport for a living. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I want to do this to the best of my ability. I want to do this so that I I can speak to others who are looking up to me, whatever. So talk about that. I mean, when you gave your life to Christ, did that change your mindset on the track? Or is that a lesson you've been learning? Or I mean... Yeah, I think, again, going into freshman year, I forgot about everything. I forgot about my own doing. I forgot about my own will. I'm mean, like... I am not going to sit here and go through this, you know, this whole, you know, this new transition period of me going to college and, you know, and try to make everything happen for myself because I had already tried that (laughs) this past year and it was not a good experience for me. I was so down bad. I was so weak. And so I just told myself that I don't want to, I don't want to try and force things. And so that's when I just told myself that, okay, going into this year, don't know what's going to happen. I don't care what's going to happen either. I just want to try my best to run every race as if it's my last race. And I think as I was going through the races of my freshman year, every week there was like something great that was happening. It's like, okay, I just broke my PR. Oh my gosh. Okay. The next race, breaking Mm. my PR again. Oh my gosh. Now I just ran a U20 record. And it's like, I wasn't expecting any of this to happen, Mm. but I don't know. The Lord is just so faithful to me. And, you know, I didn't think anything of it because I'm just like, okay, this is great, but I'm going to just keep going because also COVID um, also brought me to a point, or I think all of us to a point where we're like, we don't know when this is going to end. So yeah. we just have to take every single day as if it's our last day running track mm-hmm. and field. And um, I think that was also helpful in disguise. Um, and so just, yeah, going through that first year, it definitely... I definitely just allowed Christ to guide my life in that mm. point. And I think it was just so free mm. because I wasn't thinking about mm. the Olympics, especially in the beginning. I was I was just like, okay. I think once we said we were going to run at Olympic trials, then I was like, okay, I guess we might run at the Olympics. And then when we actually got mm. to the Olympics in the final, I'm like, oh, I guess I might as well run for gold. You know, it was just a, mm. I didn't really care about anything. You know, it was just yeah. me actually just trying my best just to put my best foot forward every single time I was on the track. Literally. Yeah. And, um, I think now after having that experience and then now going through this period of my career now, it's a bit hard. I feel like I'm now actually learning what it is to run for Christ Mm. or be an athlete for Christ and not for my own self or for anyone else. Because again, as we said, like athletics, it's partially you, but then it's also, you know, your faith. And Mm -hmm. so I think I'm at a learning point where I am basically learning how to surrender to Christ and just allow him to drive my whole career, Mm -hmm. but then also learning to put my effort forward, but not for myself or for anyone else, but solely just for him Mm -hmm. and to just appreciate the opportunity that he has for me. Um, Yeah, it's a... I'm at that growing point right now and um, it's taken a little bit of time, but I think going especially into this next year, it's going to be a whole different kind of yeah idea for me. And um, yeah. That's amazing. I think mm-hmm. so we have mutual friends, Sydney and Andre. Yeah. And you've been at the height of glory on, in your events, holding world records, one of the fastest women in the world, Olympic champion. You're the youngest a uh, single individual track and field athlete to have an Olympic gold and a world's championship. Yeah. But then this past year, you were not in Paris because of a fall in the trials. And talking to Sydney and Andre, one of the first questions, they came back from the trials before going to the Olympics. And one of the first questions we asked was, how's the thing doing? Mm-hmm. Because that's such a difficult thing to walk through. Yeah, And I think I communicated this to you, but... Andre looked at me and just said, Jeremy, Sydney and I went to talk to her, wanting to encourage her, and we left 
<laughs> encouraged. We left, mm -hmm. she was ministering to us. And he was like on the verge of tears, <laughs> like her strength. And even though this is one of the hardest things she's going to go through as an athlete mm -hmm. and in life. Yeah. They were they were blown they walked away from that conversation blown away going their faith is now bolstered and strengthened getting to watch yours yeah. and so walk us through that how you I mean from the moment you fell in the trials and then how that strengthened your faith because I'll just say this and we can we can dig into this but like in ginger and I's marriage it's not on a track it's in life. Mm -hmm. But we've found, and I think most people would agree with this in life, it's often the trials mm -hmm. that grow us the most. And you've had quite a trial. Yeah. And yet your faith has remained. And what a beautiful testimony to others, whether it was Sydney and Andre or all the young women looking up to you and to see you still giving honor and glory to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So talk us through that. <sighs> yeah. Olympic trials was a very tough time. Um, but I mean, I think just this whole, I guess, in season kind of part of the year has been pretty tough because a lot of things have happened leading up and then post Olympic trials. Um, so maybe like six weeks before Olympic trials, I ended up, I tore my hamstring. And so that mm -hmm. was like the first thing that we needed to heal from before leading, you know, going into Olympic trials. And when that happened, I mean, I still was kind of hopeful about you know running at olympic trials didn't really know what was going to happen but i'm like okay i mean we'll kind of see but the idea of you know possibly going and like winning and all that was diminishing just a little bit just because i knew that coming from a hamstring tear was like a pretty tough injury to mm -hmm. speed up and recover from um but you know we managed to make it to olympic trials and then i Good thing we had three rounds to run. And so just throughout the rounds, I just gained a little bit more confidence, a little bit more confidence. And then running in the final, super unfortunate. Uh, did not expect that to happen any, at all. But I was absolutely distraught, I could say. But I mean, after finishing, I think I can't really say that it was because of the hamstring injury that happened beforehand that kind of helped me, you know, possibly think of that I wouldn't make the Olympic team just because of this. But I think that injury kind of helped me almost think, you know, kind of feel almost at peace when mm. this Olympic trials event happened. And I think it was just because I, first of all, I don't even know how I made it to this Olympic trials, like just to mm. even compete in the first yeah. place. And so me being able to be here and actually run and make mm. it to the final mm -hmm. is absolutely insane. And that's not my own doing at all. Mm. And so, you know, being done with it, I was just looking forward because I knew leading up to it, we weren't really prepared as much as we could have been. And so I'm just like, all right, uh, this didn't happen the way that we expected it to, but you know, we have more things leading, you know, to look forward to. Don't know, not sure what's going to happen for the next couple of months or what we're planning on doing, mm -hmm. but all I can do is literally look forward. The Olympics is only going to be, I don't know, a four week event it's going to be hard to watch it's going to be hard to like not be around mm -hmm. it but it's only going to be a four-week event and so it's going to be over at some point and these things do not last forever and mm -hmm. so that's kind of the mindset i tried to have at that moment especially i'm just like all right i know the reality of this i've gone through the past two years or the past three years of being a professional basically and you know everything happens so quick and so i was kind of just like all right this is gonna you know kind of fly away in the blink of an eye um and then we'll be at the next point. We'll just be able to reset. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I was trying to have that mindset for a little bit. And that's when we decided to kind of proceed our season for the next couple of months. Um, and so that was still a little bit tough for me, too, because I kind of had to reset and just be like, all right, Olympic trials mm -hmm. is done. Let's try and do the summer summer season. And so we were training just in L.A. just for just prepping before we decided to go tra uh, train in Europe. And I kind of had a moment where I broke down a little bit. I'm like, oh, I actually don't know if I can do this. Mm -hmm. um, and that was just right before we were getting ready to travel. And um, that's when I decided, okay, once again, let me just get myself together because I don't know what the Lord's going to do at the end of the season. But if I don't do anything now, if I don't try and push through it now, then I'm leaving something 
that could be something on the table. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so I decided, all right, let's just keep pushing forward. And then again, going and training in Europe, I en ended up getting injured once again. And so that's when we decided, okay, mm -hmm. this is probably not going to happen. Uh, but I think just the continuous restarting for me really took a toll on me. And though I was pretty good at Olympic trials and, you know, with just okay with what happened, I think as the months kind of kept going and progressing, progress, progressing, and me having to reset and just, you know, renew my mind and just mm. continue yeah. to trust Christ mm -hmm. again and like continue to trust that my body's going to hold up. It was just like, you know, a little, it, it took a lot out of me. It was a mental toll. And so mm -hmm. that's when finally, I think when we got to the end of the season, I was just a little distraught. I'm just like, okay, this is really unfortunate yeah. because, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, I really try to do it, especially not for myself, because at some point I also was just like, like. I don't really know if I like, I don't know, like, I don't know what's going to happen at the end of this year. I don't know if mm -hmm. like, if I do good or if I do bad, it's not really, I feel like it won't affect me as much as I would like it to affect. Not, you know, I, of course I don't want to be hurt if I don't mm -hmm. do so great, but like, it's not going to affect me in a way that is kind of healthy when it comes to me being a professional athlete within the mm -hmm. sport. And so I just decided, all right, we're going to just end it. And that's when over the past couple of months leading into where we are now it's just been a it's just been a resetting and renewal moment for me mm -hmm. I had to really get down and just be within the word mm -hmm. to kind of just try to understand what Christ has for me at this point and this past year was more than just about me and running track and field mm -hmm. I think the main thing it was about was just me and growing in Christ even more yeah. and truly mm -hmm. trusting him because I've never been at a point in my career where I was like solely just relying on Christ and being like, Hey, like mm -hmm. I need your help. Get me to the next point. All right. I have to reset again. Please help me reset. It was always just me going through the motions and me just, you know, just being the athlete and not, you mm -hmm. know, and doing it more so out of the physical abilities that I had than out of the spiritual, um, just, the spiritual ways that could actually help me. And so, um, yeah. yeah, now I'm actually at a point where I'm deciding to be, well, where Christ is renewing me in the leads up, up to this next season, but it's been really tough, but I realized mm -hmm. that I absolutely cannot do it on my own. And yeah, Christ is the only one who's going to be guiding the ship. That's I amazing. love hearing that. And I think just like something that stands out to me is just like your mindset through it all, because I think, whether people are athletes or not, we can all take away something from this is like when you're in that thought process of like, what, who is my identity found in? Is it like found in the person next to me and the people cheering me on in the stands or is it found in Christ? And I think you just keep going back to like, like not allowing those thoughts to like linger there. And I think that's something that all of us can be challenged by in that, that example of like looking to Christ and not, you know, just not letting those thoughts linger and yeah. taking them captive and like realizing, okay, I want to like focus on my goal, do all for Christ and not for the people around me. And I think that's such a beautiful yeah. testimony of how God's transformed your heart and of your desire to like, just to glorify God in everything, enjoy the sport, do your best for the glory of God and leave the results to him. Um, and it screams of there's a maturity there. You're yeah. you're still only 22, right? 22. Yeah. And you, you said something though. So I'm a Pearl Jam fan, <laughs> and you probably don't even know who Pearl Jam I is. I sure don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Ginger didn't either when we I met. Didn't know. Now she knows. <laughs> but so they're a band, and um, I don't agree with everything they say, but sometimes there's nuggets of wisdom. And Eddie Vedder, the singer, in one of his songs says, "The young they can lose hope." because they can't see beyond today. Yes. <laughs> the wisdom which the old can't give away. So there's something to an older person looking at a younger person and saying, it's going to be okay. Yeah. It's going to get better. But the young, they're in the midst of it. And they go, this is my life's over. I can't see past mm -hmm. Friday night or I can't see past. But something where you said, I mean, to get, you said, this is going to pass. Mm -hmm. And the Olympics, just four weeks, it's like, no, but it's the Olympics. Yeah. You're going, no, no, it's going to be over. And then we're going to move on. And that perspective is a perspective that can't be taught. That's a perspective mm -hmm. that comes with like years and years of wisdom living life. And you haven't, you're, yeah. you're young and you're even younger then. Mm -hmm. So for you to have that perspective is a real grace mm -hmm. that the Lord gave of, I mean, that's maturity, I think. That's for, for you in the midst of this storm to say, 
it, it'll pass and things will be better and I'll, I'll learn from this and I can move past this. That's, that's incredible maturity. Yeah. Um, don't know where I get it from. I guess it's just a gift from God, mm -hmm. but I think it is. Um, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I had to mature just within maybe, especially my sport yeah. because yeah. I've been doing Quickly. it since I was so young and it's just taken me to different mm -hmm. levels. It's even just as yeah. a teenager and just having that experience, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, that's kind of helped me just kind of see a broader vision and perspective about mm -hmm. these type of things. You know what strikes me is that you're such a mature, godly young woman, and the Bible says that the wicked run when no man pursues. And so I'm still trying to <laughs> reconcile how you can be a runner when nobody's chasing you, but so godly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like it. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, I, so I, could never, <laughs> I could never run uh, just for the sake of running, but you enjoyed it, huh? As a yeah. kid, you just... It it literally just became a habit. Yeah. I mean, I, I like didn't it. recognize, I didn't realize I was doing it. It was just like, okay, we're just <laughs> running. We're just here. Great. It's amazing how you did not realize you were running. Okay. So I have to tell you, I, the past couple of years signed up for a 5k days before and I had never run, like I'd never been a runner. I just would do like weights and stuff. Right. So, um, anyhow, but for some reason I signed up for like a 4th of July 5k and I'm Are like, you gonna ask her to race? it's so oh, warm gonna... and I'm just saying like, to not think that you're running, I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> but like so when you're a warm. kid, you're not, you know, like kids it's just run around yeah, like six miles true. a day, just doing nothing, just that's playing. So and true. so it's like, but it's incredible. I think that's just how I, it was. I mean, but when it, once I ran a five k, my admiration for runners mm -hmm. just like increased because I was like, I finished probably the last. <laughs> The last category possible. It's okay. But no, I was like, I did, did it. Good, I mean, you did good. I don't know. She did good. The last one I did better, but literally I signed up two days before. I'm crazy. I'm like, I'm going to do this. And, and I tried, tried to get, to get Jeremy to, to do it. That, yeah, no you should. Why, why, why not? Now because I it's like, running a thing. It's I probably running. won't do it this next swimming. year because, yeah. you know, baby on the way. So yeah. I'm going to have to stand up. But anyhow, enough about <laughs> that. But I really do have admiration for runners in a whole new way after just trying to do this little yeah. 5k run you know we were I watching we were watching some of your races the other day oh, gosh. and i was telling ginger note your face <laughs> oh because goodness. there's when it's you crazy. were when you were in that fight for the goal or the world's championship yeah right after you had won olympic gold and it was hutchinson yeah hodgkinson hodgkinson on your heels and the commentator is going nuts and it's that last stretch but your face is perfectly calm you so calm i was like <laughs> Oh my goodness. But then the moment you crossed wow. the line, it was like pain because you oh, had yeah. just expended yourself. And yet in mm -hmm. in the moment, it's like perfect serenity. But you're actually, your body's under stress. Oh, I'm yeah. just so curious. Like, what are you thinking? I know you want to get there, but like, what, is there something like playing you're, in your you're head when you're running there? there? I just, I just <laughs> don't, I don't understand how you can be so chill. You're, you have all these people around and you are like you said, exerting so much energy and I don't know, like I just, this is like the only thing I can wait to. I'm like, if I'm giving like birth, if I'm oh, in God. labor and you're in so much pain and agony, yeah. but you are pushing through and you look so calm, like he said, and I'm like, how, how do you like mentally where, where is your head when you kick off that race, when it starts and as you're running? I mean, I feel like it just, well, I don't know. I, I was going to say it takes practice, but then you see some athletes that are running and they don't look mm -hmm. the same. But <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, I feel like the 800 is such a hard event. And so I like, I don't want to overexert myself in any way possible until I finish and cross that finish line because it's so hard. Like mm -hmm. it's such a tedious event. Like I, and so you're talking about a 5k. I'm like, just wait until you go train for the 800 meters, Ginger. Dang. You're going to really <laughs> you experience. Know, uh... after I'm done having the kids, maybe that, no, no, definitely not. <laughs> not, I don't think I'm called to do that. So, hey. <laughs> but I don't know. It's, I feel like, especially in that moment at world champs in 2022, I was, I don't know. I, I don't really know what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't even know where I got that little extra surge of energy and just push to go finish at the end mm -hmm. but um i don't know i was just like you gotta like you're not at the end yet like you can't 
don't let this be. Mm-hmm. Like, I obviously want to win. Mm-hmm. And so I was just trying to push myself as hard as I could and that mamba stay Incredible. under, what is it? Stay under control. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we just, oh yeah, because they always say you, you have to relax when you're finishing races, especially or wow. else you will like fall out and like mm-hmm. literally fall out. Mm-hmm. So I just tried to do that. And um, yeah, Lord was on my side that day. That's incredible. incredible. That, uh, that's wow. one of the coolest moments in sports. I mean, you, I get chills watching that because it's a dog fight at the end. Yeah. And you're not giving an inch. I tried not to. <laughs> um, man, well, I think thanks for hanging out and talking yeah. to us. And I'm just curious, though, before we close this out, because where are you now? What are you what is your goal? What are you working towards right now? Yeah, we well, track wise, we have world championships in September next year and it's in wow. Tokyo. And so I just, you know, I pray mm. that first of all we make it through trials and then mm. we make it to that race because I just feel like it's going to be a circle moment for me because mm-hmm. that's basically where I started mm-hmm. and then I had some highs and then I've had some lows and then here we are at this new point in my life both just spiritually and professionally. And so I don't know, I just want to see what's going to happen. Um but we're just working towards world championships next year. And um, yeah, we're starting not too soon, but soon starting back up this next season. But besides that, just uh, just relaxing, getting my mind renewed, my spirit renewed, and my body mm. back to where it needs to be before starting. And yeah, That's off awesome. season right now. So cool. Okay, there's a couple of things we got to talk about. So one of the questions we get a ton from our listeners is about devotional life, actually. And they're always asking Ginger, like, what are you reading? Or uh, how do you spend your devotionals? And devos have been a huge part of your maturity and growth in the Lord. So what's a devotional time with a thing look like in the morning? Uh, In the morning. Uh, Let's see. If it's in the morning. Yeah. Or at (laughs) at any time that I can make it it happen. Um, I usually start with a prayer. And then I think for the most part, I like to journal my prayers. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if I just pray before, then I would just like write in my journal and also journal and Mm -hmm. pray too. Um, And then I move towards, I just have one book that I'm reading right now. It's it's called Doubt. I've actually been reading it. Sorry, I'm a really bad reader. So I've been reading it for like a lot of couple of months, Mm -hmm. even though it's only a 30 day (laughs) devotional. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, you know, just bringing us back to the reality of Christ and who Christ is and, Mm -hmm. you know, taking away the, our own just thoughts and putting our thoughts on Christ so that we may just be centered again. So that's just a book I'm reading. I've been reading that since like Olympic trials Mm -hmm. and leading up to Olympic trials. Um, But after that, then I go read the scripture that it has laid out for me Mm -hmm. and then maybe possibly go into reading a book. I'm actually reading the believer's walk with christ it's a j mac book oh, that's cool that's it's really awesome. good um it. and yeah so it's not anything tedious it's just mm. a little bit of prayer a little bit of scripture and this devotional book that i have but I love uh, it. yeah just spending a little um, bit of time that's so good second thing you've got some new jewelry on your hand oh my god ah, we have to talk about it <laughs> okay so i'm just gonna like take a moment we want to hear all the details real quick like Ooh. just give us the info how did that how did that come to be? What was the setting? Um how yeah, was the question? I'm officially engaged. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Leading into marriage now. Um, but this happened in July, actually. It was post Olympic trials. Just after Olympic trials, I'm like, oh, yeah, I just need time to just relax because yeah. I can't do anything right now. Mm. So went up to Malibu, actually place called Calamigos Ranch. It's so nice. It's so mm. pretty. It's just like so green, just like so open. And um Igor, my fiance, he was there with me and we were just hanging out and one of the days he's like, "Oh, hey, there's a really cool spot that we have that that I saw and it'd be like really nice to have like a front yard like this because we're always talking about like homes and mm-hmm. I want animals and so, you know, we uh, obviously need space yeah. and just like a big green yard." And so He took me over to that area and he's like, okay, so yeah, just like check it out and let's just hang out. Um, And so I'm like, all right, sure, if you want to hang out. So we just like sat down on the ground, really big, maybe like 400 meter, like just like just plain grass field. And 
there was actually like a drone in the sky too. And I'm like, oh, wow. Somebody's like, maybe, like a drone. No, but I'm like, oh, maybe it's just the, the ranch that's just yeah. trying to get some videos of like, you know, nice views and just like of the property. property. And I was just like, oh, maybe they just think we look so cute sitting here. <laughs> so just, just hanging out. To, like, pose. Yeah. And, and, um, <laughs> And honestly, I was like, I was pretty tired. So I was like, oh, maybe we can just nap here because like <laughs> the sun is shining really nice. Um, but then after that, um, he's like, all right, let's get up and let's like go head over. Just totally disregarded the drone. And um, he was kind of holding me just a little bit. And he's like, all right, um, I just have one more thing to ask you. And I was like, ah. <laughs> there's, but I knew that that was going to be the case because when he had first asked me to be his girlfriend, that's exactly what he asked. So I was like, I know exactly oh, what you're doing. That's and so, so sweet. yeah. But did he like the whole day? You didn't suspect it? You didn't suspect anything? Oh, I was didn't he acting suspect kind of like suspicious? Absolutely anything. Oh, really? Like, woke up in the morning, went to go get some breakfast, <laughs> just hanging out. Um, I love it. Um, I think, like he said, like I touched his pocket or something, and, and he's like, like, "Oh!" No. <laughs> and so he he was like, "Oh, let me just like go to the bathroom because I like you know yeah. so that he can like move it somewhere else." Yeah. And so yep. he went to the bathroom, and just like, "Oh, this is still so normal." And oh, then we went. We were so just funny. it was su a super chill like yeah weekend, and so I was just like, "Oh, nothing's gonna happen." Like we're just yeah. Just I wasn't even out. expecting it yeah. out. Literally just hanging out. I um, love it. He told me to sit down at some point, like right before we walked <laughs> to that big green area, because yeah. he's like, "Oh." um, yeah, let me just go to the bathroom. He was in there for quite a while. I was like, <laughs> I hope he's all right. I almost called him and was just like, all right, are you good? <laughs> yeah. um, but then I still didn't think anything of it. Again, the drone was his. It was his That's camera guy. So I was like, and I still didn't think anything. I was just like, oh, they just think we're that cool. That is so, so awesome. No, he well, did the really pictures good job. on Instagram uh, are awesome. Yeah, love it. he did a really good job at surprising. Amazing. So. That's so cool. Well done. That's great. And isn't that just like the Lord in the midst of some... Yeah. Mm. It. Yeah, I was... Yeah, I was like, wow, this is, you know, and again, it's like, this is just a, this year has just been more than just a track and field year for me. You know, it's been a spiritual growth year for me. And so I'm just like, you know, the Lord is bringing more things to my table, just spiritually, spirit wise, that I, you know, just need to see, just take mm -hmm. in, understand and accept. And, um, you know, part of it being, you know, now getting engaged and preparing That's for marriage. Insane. And so... Yeah, it's been a it's been a fun journey. The Lord has just been, you know, doing his thing. He's a he's a funny guy. <laughs> I you know, love it. We've we've had experiences together and <laughs> I don't know. That's so fun. That's awesome. I think thanks so much for hanging out. You're yeah, so cool. Thank Aww. you. This oh has God. been a blast. <laughs> so much fun. Thanks for having me, guys. The first guest. That's, That's crazy. Go. The thing mo. Uh well thanks for hanging out and uh we'll we'll have to do this again sometime. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. 